of tissue tumors. The first question is, what do you mean by soft tissues? Anybody? Can you define it? soft tissue? What is a soft tissue? Muscles, bones. So here comes, you know. So it should not be half a cell. Basically, soft tissues are all non epithelial tissue. All yeah. non epithelial tissue, excluding, excluding bone, cartilage, central nervous system, mm -hmm. lymphoid, and hematopoietic tissues. Okay. So you have to exclude. Now, still there are many tissues. Okay, yeah. still there are many tissues. All non epithelial tissues, excluding bone, bone cartilage, CNS, CNS hematopoietic, and lymphoid tissues. The rest we will. Group them all under the soft tissues. Like you have fibrous tissue, okay, smooth muscle. You have skeletal muscle. You have adipose tissue. Huh? So these all will come under the so this lecture is mainly concerning the soft tissue tumors. What are the soft tissue tumors? What are the types? What is the cause? What are the etiopathogenesis? So etiopathogenesis. In majority of the cases, the cause is not known. Majority of the cases, the cause is unknown or not known. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? All these cases, if you go for the genetic studies of all these cases, genetic studies, what you will find, there must, there will be some defect in the genes. There may be some mutation in the genes, there may be some chromosomal abnormalities. So, even if the cause is not known, but most of these cases will be associated with genetic and chromosomal abnormalities. Okay? So, mostly the cause is unknown, but majority of them will show mutation of the genes. Other well-defined causes can be there. What are the well-defined causes? Radiation therapy, one. Then, Phenoxy herbicides, you know herbicides? Herbicides. herbicides? herbicides. Yeah, in agriculture we use them, herbicides. Like pesticides, you use for killing the insects. So herbicides are also there. Which in agriculture you have rice. So to kill the weeds, you use the herbicides. Okay? Then chlorophenols, some cases. Then rarely you can find other causes like chemicals, like burns, like trauma. And very, very rarely. Kaposi sarcoma virus, human herpes virus, it may be associated with these tumors. So, broadly speaking, the etiopathogenesis, the cause is mostly unknown, but there are some causes like chemical use, burns, trauma, or herbicide, pesticide use may be associated with the development of these sarcomas. Clear? And mostly these sarcomas, they are sporadic. They are not familial. They do not run in the families. Okay? They are sporadic. Here one, then there another. Huh? So they are sporadic. But some may be associated with some of the familial syndromes. What are the familial syndromes? Neurofibromatosis type 1. Then the Gardner syndrome and Lyfromani syndrome. These are some of the syndromes which may be associated with the development of soft tissue sarcomas. Now, again repeat with me. The etiopathogenesis, the causes are mostly unknown, but some of the causes are here, which may be associated. And mostly these are sporadic, only few are associated with some of the familial symptoms. Only three tumors, the fifth, the medium? Yeah. And soft tissue? Mostly, mostly associated with these. The important ones, neurofibromatosis, Gardner syndrome and life of one syndrome. But they may be associated with some other, but rare. These are the common ones. We try to put in the lecture on the notes the common ones. Because if I put the rare ones also, then you will not remember the common ones, you will remember the rare ones. And in the exam, the common ones will come and you will forget, and then the, <laughs> the problem arises there. So male to female ratio, 1.4 to 1. Okay? Not much difference. Common in the males. Incidence increases with the age. 
as the person ages the incidence of these sarcomas will increase and this is but in children also this is common malignancy in children also this is common this is the fourth most common malignancy in the children fourth most common i will not ask you what are the other common malignancies <laughs> go home and <laughs> see to it what they are like leukemias so this is the fourth most common malignancy and 40% 40% of these malignancies they come in the lower extremities especially around the thigh and 30% in the trunk and retroperitoneal so 40% in the lower extremities especially around the knee joint or thigh okay especially around the knee joint or thigh and 30% in the trunk or retroperitoneal behind the peritoneum how you will grade these tumors how you will grade because we are not talking about the benign tumors when we talk about the grade we talk about the malignancy because benign is benign you don't need to give grade 1 2 3 yes. you need to give grading in cases of the malignant tumors so as to give an idea to the clinician what should be the treatment so grade 1 okay might sort of a tumor grade 2 moderate and grade 3 severe like well differentiated moderately differentiated or poorly differentiated sometimes we can give four grades also in some so mostly we will give three grades grade 1 2 3 and it is based on the degree of differentiation of the tumor what do you mean by degree of differentiation anybody differentiation of the tumor to the differentiation uh uh and and then you can compare then you see I will break your phone. We don't joke. I will break it, and I will see who will say me anything. Yes. Compare the numbers and all those things. Ah, yeah. So differentiation means how much the tumor resembles the normal tissue. Well differentiated means it resembles the normal tissue to a large extent. So poorly differentiated, very less resemblance. This is how you will grade. So well different, it resembles the normal tissue. It means it will be good behaving. Mm. Uh, it will be good behaving and it will spread slowly. So it is well different. Poorly differentiated means it will not resemble. So it will be you know ghost like. It will spread to the surrounding tissue, metastasize. This is how. This is the degree of differentiation. Then the number of mitosis, cellularity, and pleomorphism. What is cellularity? How many, How many cells in the tumor? You have high cellularity. It means the tumor is fast growing, or it has high metastatic potential. Pleomorphism, uh, shape and uh, change in the variation in the size and, and shape. shape. Very good. Diagnosis, you know. And what are the number of mitosis per high power field? You know high power field. You know high power field. Unfortunately, you should get the microscope for this. When you see the microscope, you have one scanner. that is the first one under which you will see the whole almost you can see the major portion of the slide scanner then comes the low power low power view lpf then comes the high power you have 40x or 60x according to the you know how much uh, you can enlarge the image huh? how much near it will appear to you then is the oil immersion that is 100x okay So this is the high power. Under the high power lens, you will see there are four or five lenses on the microscope. If you see under the high power lens, you will see how many mitoses you find in one field. Okay. So according to that, you will grade the carcinoma. Okay. So it is cellularity, pleomorphism, necrosis, mitosis, and the degree of differentiation. But the histological diagnosis is important, but it is critical because most of the times these are you know overlapping tumors. so you will not be able to differentiate them properly okay so what you require now if you are not able to diagnose a tumor on microscopy what you will do you will do the electron microscopy you will do the immuno histochemistry you will do the marker study you will do the gene study cytogenetics molecular genetics okay chromosome okay. so these are the studies which you will do and you will say definitely okay it is a fibrous tissue tumor it is a liposarcoma or whatever 
So histological diagnosis may not be able to diagnose the tumor properly. So then we will say, if I am the pathologist, I suspect, okay, there is a suspicion of synovial sarcoma or there is a suspicion of liposarcoma. But the final diagnosis may be reached by, then I will say, marker study. I will suggest the markers, okay? Immunohistochemistry, okay? Or cytogenetic study. Then, then the patient will take the biopsy specimen and go for these studies. And he will come back. He will have a particular, you know, if there is chromosome X16, X12, he will say, okay, there is a translocation. And I will see to which tumor this translocation belongs. And this will be the final diagnosis. So sometimes the histological diagnosis may not be done on the histology alone and we have to restore for electron microscopy, cytogenetics and other techniques. So these are the tumors. This is a tissue and this is a tumor. Very easy. From the tissue. Adipose tissue. You have the lipocytes. So benign tumor lipoma, malignant lipocytoma. Okay, fibrous tissue fibroma, fibrosarcoma, fibrohistiocytic tumors, fibrous, benign fibrous histiocytoma, malignant fibrous histiocytoma. Then skeletal muscle, rhabdo. We use the word rhabdo. Rhabdomyoma, rhabdomyosarcoma. What do you mean? Rhabdo. Rhabdo we use for the skeletal muscle. The word. So rhabdo for the skeletal muscle, rhabdomyoma, rhabdomyosarcoma. For the smooth muscle, we use Leo, Leo myoma or Leo myosarcoma. Vascular tumors, the benign hemangioma, diphangioma, and malignant hemangiopericytoma and angiosarcoma. Peripheral nerve tumors, neurofibroma and schwannoma. And here, malignant, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors. And there are some tumors in which the histogenesis is uncertain. We don't know which cell has given rise to this tumor. Okay. So these are some of the tumors. Synovial sarcoma, alveolar soft quad sarcoma and epithelioid sarcoma. Still there are others also. Okay. So this, here I have written benign and malignant. So here, these tumors, we know, this is benign, 100% benign. This is malignant, 100%. But no, it's third category of tumors is coming. Third category of tumors. Here you are confused whether this is benign or malignant. So you say this is borderline. Borderline. This is a borderline. So you, for the treatment, it will be difficult now. You have to decide about the treatment also. So borderline, you cannot take it lightly. It has to be taken seriously. Because it can be malignant. It can be. It is going towards the malignancy. Maybe after some time it goes into the malignancy also. So benign and there are some borderline tumors regarding the fibrous tissue. We have one called fibromatosis. Okay. Regarding the fibrohistiocytic tumors, we have dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. Then smooth muscles. We have smooth muscle tumors of uncertain malignant potential. This is a borderline. Vascular tumors. We have hemangioendothelioma. Okay. So some of the important tumors we will discuss now. Fibroma. So fibrous tissue tumors, we have benign fibroma, malignant fibrosarcoma, and in between the two, fibromatosis. Okay. So fibroma, what is fibroma now? Fibromas mm -hmm. can be found at any age in either sex, but most common they are found in the adults. Most commonly in the adults. Clear? Clear. And what are they? Round to avoid, smooth, mostly round, avoid, smooth, and firm because they contain the fibrous tissue. They are firm. And maybe sessile or pedunculate. What do you mean by sessile or pedunculate? No. Sessile is uh, like a ball on the scale of the service. Like a ball with a stick. Stick, very good, very good. Just like apple. You know, apple has a small stick to which it is attached. Okay. Oh, I will show you. Can you do one ah, for me, please? It's a pen leaf. Actually, I cannot bear much. I don't know if it is working or not. Just 
this by the diagram I can show you. Suppose the tumor is arising here. This is SI. And this is Pitagoras. So what is this? This is called star. This is a star. So tumors which are attached to the surface by means of a stalk, they are pedunculate tumors. And when there is no stalk, it is called sessile tumors. Okay? So they may be sessile or they may be pedunculate. You might have seen tumors swelling in the skin like this also and having a stalk also sometimes. Huh? So the range is from 1 mm to 2 cm. The size, maximum 2 cm they can reach. Histologically what you will find, although they are well circumscribed, they will be well circumscribed, but they are unencapsulated. There is no capsule. There is no capsule. So benign tumors, sometimes they will not have the capsule. So it is not a you know rule that a benign tumor should have a capsule. It should be capsulated. But if it is not capsulated, it will be well circumscribed. You got it? Yes. There? Yes. If the capsule is not there, okay, fine. But it should be well circumscribed. So it means it is not going or infiltrating into the surrounding tissues. So unencapsulated nodular mass of dense fibrous connective tissue. This is the fibroma from the fibrous tissue. So you will find dense fibrous connective tissue arranged in haphazard fascicles. I will show you the diagram. Haphazard fascicles. There is no definite arrangement. So it is haphazard. Haphazard. So surface epithelium, if it arises from the skin, it may be ulcerated, it may be atrophic, the skin, or it may be hyperkeratotic. Okay? So hyperkeratotic, hyperplastic, atrophic, or ulcerated. So this is a fibrous tissue. You know, fibroblast and collagen. Okay? Fibrous tissue is basically fibroblast and fibroblast will lay down the collagen. Halas. Fibroblast along with the collagen. This is fibrous tissue. Now, these are fibroblasts which are run, running, you know, these are fascicles basically. This is one fascicle, then this is another. So they are haphazardly arranged. There is no definite arrangement. Okay? So this is ovarian fibroma, taken from an ovary. So this is the haphazard arrangement of the fascicles. No, fibroma was benign. Okay. This is in between the fibroma and fibrosarcoma. So you have the fibromatosis. This is the borderline. Borderline. We have to treat it. We have to treat it. We cannot leave it as such. And what are the what is the reason why we should treat it? Because this is the great uh, basement in the yeah, I will tell you, I will tell you. Uh, basement membrane. Does it break or not? That will be more clear in case of the epithelial tumors. You got it? Yes. If you have the epithelial tumor, that will be more clear because there is an epithelium here, one, two, three layers, okay? There is a basement membrane. Benign tumors remaining above, okay? Cancers invading, very good question. But borderline, what? is then the difference. Here, here, borderline will not invade. Because once it invades, it is cancer. Malignant. It is malignant. So what will be there? There will be changes in the cells. The cells will have changes which are somewhat malignant or anaplastic changes. But they will not invade. So this is borderline. They have the changes. Benign, no, but cannot invade. It's like a carcinoma in situ. Yeah. You can see it is a sort of carcinoma in situ. But as I was telling you, carcinoma in situ in the epithelial tumors. Isn't it? That is for the epithelial tumor. So here the condition is this is a sarcoma, this is a fibrous tissue, adipose tissue. So it is different. Got it? This is connective tissues, these are different. So epithelium is very clear. Epithelium is very clear. There is a basement membrane, multi-layered epithelium. So you can see how it will invade. So here what happens? This, if you find this tumor, what you will find? There will be infiltration of the surrounding tissue. Benign. This is benign. It is well circumscribed. 
maybe it is having the capsule surrounding it a fibrous tissue capsule or it is not having a capsule but it is well circumscribed okay but no talking about the borderline what it will do this is a tumor and it infiltrates into the surrounding tissue okay it infiltrates into the surrounding tissue goes into the surrounding tissue but does not metastasize here comes the difference if you talk about the soft tissue sarcomas they can infiltrate locally but they will not metastasize clear there in epithelial tissue you will say the invasion here you will talk about the infiltration into the surrounding tissue so they will be infiltrating but they will not metastasize and even if you remove them many of them will recur recur so this is the reason why you should treat it this is the reason you should treat it and there are many types of fibromatosis one is the superficial fibromatosis superficial one is the deep so deep fibromatosis is a dermoid tumor desmoid tumor sorry it can occur in the retroperitoneal tissues and superficial fibromatosis is the palmar fibro fibromatosis here on the palms it is also known as ductus contracture so once there is fibromatosis it will lead to contraction fibrous tissue it will contract once it contracts so what happens to the hands so hands are like this because of the contraction of the fibrous tissue then penile fibromatosis on the penis this is known as peyronie's disease even the penis can be affected then this is the deep out please i told you in the beginning somebody does a bad thing okay he keeps it under but you know he is sitting like this and what is the fun of coming here tell me i will give you the attendance either you respect the class you enter a masjid you respect the masjid Yeah. there is a decorum of the masjid same like decorum decorum there is a decorum of this college also there is a decorum of the lecture hall also there is a decorum of your home isn't it yeah. everything has got its decorum you have to maintain the decorum if you don't maintain it what is the fun of a human being you are an animal you are as good as an animal if you cannot make you know you are not well mannered you don't have the you cannot maintain the decorum then no need Isn't it, Hadad? Yes, yes, yes. So you have to maintain this. We smile also. We crack a joke in between also. But this is gross. You know, gross mistake. This is not microscopic mistake. You keep the phone open and you play with it. <laughs> even, even the mistake, the little. Yeah. <laughs> this is a gross mistake. And I told you, if in the class one I told you not to open the mobile, then why are the people open? This is bad. But this person he came late. Now in the Maybe first class, class. <laughs> I am not talking about today. I talk to you about the first class. In the first class, I talk phone should be closed. And this is general rule. Even we don't need to talk to you regarding this. This is general rule, isn't it? General rule. In the class, you will not open the mobile. Class. And he has recorded this also. Send the recording to your papers. Yes. Tell me one thing. You are recording this, you know, lecture. You feel comfortable? Do you understand while recording? Yes, sir. You understand? Yes. Sir. You are a big person. Then. <laughs> recording also half of the you know concentration in recording and half of the concentration here. Even he is recording. Sometimes I may feel some difficulty in giving the lecture. <laughs> Because here it is okay. It is recording the voice only. But here he is recording my movements. <laughs> so I have to be very careful. Sometimes I want to crack some yeah. joke, but I stop <laughs> because this is a sort of proof <laughs> against me, isn't it? <laughs> so deep fibromatosis, okay? This is superficial and deep. Superficial will affect the palms, okay? Palmar fibromatosis, and it is also known as ductus contraction. And penile fibromatosis, Peyronie's disease, penis, it will affect. this is deep breast point tumor and what you will find gray white firm masses and they will infiltrate the surrounding tissues 1 to 15 cm 
So they can fibroma can be up to two centimeters, but it can be big, up to fifteen centimeters. Histologically, what you will find again, you will find spindle-shaped cells because fibroblasts are basically like this, spindle-shaped. Okay. Spindle. It is not round. This is round. This is spindle-shaped. Okay. So you have to understand the shape. But now here, what will happen? These spindle cells will become plump. What do you mean by plump? So plump is like this. Spindle cell becoming like this. Becoming plump. Not elongated. Here it is elongated. Yes. So that is plump. <coughs> so now the cells become plump. Plump cells which are arranged in broad sweeping fascicles. So the fascicles are also big. Cells are plump and broad sweeping fascicles, big fascicles that penetrate the adjacent tissues and mitosis can be there but these are infrequent. It is in between, in between the benign and malignant, in between, borderline. We cannot say 100% this is benign, not 100% it is malignant because if you remove it, even then it will recur. Again, then you again have to remove it. So like this, yeah. Uh, the hallmark is the uh, infiltration. Yeah, here the hallmark is the infiltration of the borderline. Infiltration into the surrounding tissue. Into the surrounding. This is how it will be different from the benign. This is how it will be different from the benign because it will infiltrate the surrounding tissue. Now comes the fibrosarcoma. This is the malignant one. It occurs as I said. Sarcomas will be most commonly present in around the knee, around the knee, no. in the thigh, and in the retroperitoneal area. Most commonly, okay, in adults, and they are slow growing. And how many will metastasize? Twenty-five percent, more than twenty-five percent will metastasize, more than twenty-five percent. And local recurrence, if you remove it, local recurrence is more than fifty percent. So this is malignant. Local recurrence also more than 50% and it can metastasize to lungs, to other places and more than 25%. Why it will metastasize hematogenicity? Sarcoma. Okay, good. What about the epithelial tumors? Carcinoma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They will metastasize by which rule? So, this is a general rule with some exceptions also. Okay? So, Carcinoma, they will metastasize by lymphatic roots and sarcomas will metastasize by Okay. So morphology, what you will find? These are not that firm. These are somewhat soft, unencapsulated. No capsule is there. They are soft, and but they are infiltrated. They infiltrate with areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. This is the reason for softness because there is hemorrhage, there is necrosis. Huh? So this is the reason why they are soft. So they are soft, uncapsulated, and with areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. And well differentiated. They can be well differentiated, they can be poorly differentiated. So spectrum is there. Well differentiated, moderately, and poorly differentiated. Well differentiated will resemble the normal cells. Like they will be spindle cells. Growing in a herring bone fashion. I will show you what is herring bone. And poorly differentiated are highly cellular with pleomorphism, with more mitosis, with more necrosis. As you go high, more cellularity, more pleomorphism, more mitosis. So this is the poorly differentiated. They will not resemble the normal. Very less resemblance. Moderately will resemble to some extent. Well differentiated to a larger extent. Now I will show you one. This is herring bone pattern. Got it? You have taken fish? Center, just like fish. This is herring bone. So some fibers coming here, some going there. Spindle cells. In the center, got it? This is herring bone. This is in fish. You find the bone of the fish, and you have you know bones coming out of the central bone. So this is the herring bone pattern. This is typical of fibrosarcoma. But which fibrosarcoma? Well differentiated fibrosarcoma. Okay. Well differentiated fibrosarcoma. So we finished the fibroma. 
borderline is fibromatosis very good and the malignant is fibrosis. Now, fibrous histiocytoma. We talked about the fibrous tumors. No are the tumors which come which are composed of fibrous tissue along with the histiocytes. Okay, two components are there. Fibrous histiocyte. Histiocytes, you know. So very easy to understand from this. Fibrous histiocytoma. These are composed of fibrous tissue as well as the histiocyte. histiocyte. So here you have the benign fibrous histiocytoma and the malignant one. And there is one more in between, borderline. So what is the benign one? These are relatively common lesions in the adults. Okay? Pathogenesis is uncertain. We are not certain about the pathogenesis of the causes. And most of the time these benign tumors are small, less than one centimeter, mobile nodules in the dermis or you will find small swellings. Small swellings. In the dermis or subcutaneous tissue. What you will find histologically, there will be, you know, fibrous tissue, spindle shaped cells. Interlacing spindle cells mixed with the histocytes. Mix, mixed with foamy liquid laden uh, histocyte like cells. So clear? So it will contain two varieties of cells. Spindle cells along with the histocytes. And if you remove them, they will not recur because they are benign. If you remove, they will not recur. So small composed of two types of tissue, fibrous tissue and as well as the histiocytes. Malignant fibrous histiocytes. Is it enough to send histiocytes? I don't need to send them. If you Maybe. say, if you forget, no problem. Histiocyte is enough. But if you don't write the histiocyte also, then it is. No. <laughs> so malignant fibrous histiocyte. Here the phenotype is mostly fibroblastic and not the histiocytic. And mostly these sarcomas will be, as I told you, proximal extremities and the retrovarical. Sarcomas most common in the thigh, around the knee and retroperitoneum. And what is the morphology now? They will be big. Benign fibrous histiocytoma is less than 1 cm. These are large, 5 to 20 cm. Grey white and unencapsulated. Grey white and unencapsulated. What you will find? Cytology, cytologically there will be more pleomorphism. Okay? You can find multi-nucleate cells and also you can find the story form architecture. Story form, you know? Have you seen the spokes of a wheel? There is a wheel. This is the story form architecture. Wheel, you know wheel? Yes, yes. Say yeah, for the or cart. Cart. You know, previously we were using horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is, you know. So yeah. these cells will be arranged like this. Radiating from a central spoke. Okay? This is central area and they will go like this. This is story form architecture. And most of these tumors are extremely aggressive. They are aggressive and they will recur unless there is mild excision and they have a metastatic rate of 30 to 50 percent. Yeah. So mostly they are, you know, the phenotype, phenotype is fibroclastic, but they will com be composed of both the cells, fibroclast as well as histiocytes. But there will be too much cytological pleomorphism, multi-nucleate cells and story form argument. When I will show you the diagram, it will be clear. This is benign fibrous histocytoma. You can see some of the elongated cells and some are, you know, foamy cells. The empty spaces have been created by the foamy cells, you know. And some are elongated. This is elongated. This is elongated. This is elongated. So these elongated cells are the fibroblasts. Others are the histiocytes. No, this is benign. From the look itself, seems dangerous? No. From the look. From the look. Isn't it? This seems to be dangerous. Why? This is malignant fibrous histiocytoma. What you will find? You find these cells. Some cells are small, some are big. Isn't it? Small, big. Is there variation in size? Yeah, that's Variation in shape? Yeah. Isn't it? Look at the nuclei here. Rounded, here. Compressed, here. Again rounded, oval, here. 
So all these and what is this? Multi-nuclear cell. So it has many nuclei. Multi-nuclear cell, big. So these are the features of malignancy. And when you see the individual cell, dark, more dark, hyperchromatic nuclei. So this is again a feature of malignancy. Hyperchromatic nuclei, darker nuclei, increased NC ratio. These are the features of malignancy. So here you will find now more nuclear pleomorphism, more cerebrality, okay, multi-nuclear cells, and you will form, find the story form architecture also, but it is not that clear. Here you can find to some extent spokes, but I will show you in the lab, inshallah. Is it clear? So this is benign. This is malignant. From the face. So this, we talked about the fibrous histiocytomas. One is benign, another is malignant. We will not talk about the borderline. That will have features in between. Now comes the most favorite, that is the lipoma. Lipoma is derived from the adipose tissue. Most common, most common adulthood tumor is the lipoma. If you find the most common, it is the most common adulthood tumor. Mostly these are single. And one is the conventional. It doesn't contain accepting fat cell anything. Conventional lipoma means only the fat cells. Okay, but there are other also other varieties like myolipoma. Myo means it will contain the muscle tissue also, in addition to the fat cells. Then spindle cell lipoma, it will have spindle cells. Then mylolipoma, it will have hematopoietic elements along with the fat cells. Pleomorphic, there will be pleomorphism. But it is not malignant. How you will say it is not malignant? <laughs> it is well circumscribed, very good. And it will have a capsule also. Because lipomas have capsule. So you will find the pleomorphism, but it will be capsulated. Extremely capsulated. Then angiolipoma, you will have blood vessels as well as the fat cells. So lipoma can be only conventional, only fat cells. Or it can have other things like smooth muscle, it can have skeletal muscle, it can have spindle cells, it can have hematopoietic elements, or it can have blood vessels also. So these are the varieties, variants of the lipoma. And mostly these are mobile, slowly growing, okay? Enlarging and pale less masses. Morphology, what you will find, this will be fat, as you know. What is the color of the fat? Yellow. Yellow. Soft yellow, but well and capsule. You will find the capsule of them. And histologically, these are the composed of mature fat cells. Have you seen the mature fat cells microscopically? No. I will show you. With no pleomorphism. So this is the lipoma. Close it first. So then I open it. This is the fibrous capsule here. This is the you know incised portion. Here you will see. I had opened it. So this is covered actually. And this is the microscopic. You will find polygonal or hexagonal cells, fat cells. And here nuclei are pushed to the periphery. Pushed to the periphery. Even you may not be able to see them. Nuclei may be here, may be here. Here, here. So it is completely filled with the fat. This clear space is basically fat inside the cell. This is the cell, whole cell. Clear? This is one cell, hexagonal, okay, six sided cell. Then here is the nucleus pushed to the periphery, and the whole cytoplasm is filled with fat. This is a fat cell. So this is the appearance you will get, and it will be surrounded by a capsule. Like here, you will find fibrous tissue. So it will be separated, but it is not the whole section, it is only a part of it. Okay, so this is well capsulated, yellow in color, soft, and you will find hexagonal fat cells with no pleomorphism, no variation of size and shape. Now, the malignant counterpart liposarcoma, liposarcoma, mostly old age, fifth and sixth decades of life. And what you will find here again, deep sites, retroperitoneum, visceral sites, deep soft tissues of the thigh and around the knee. Morphology, it will appear relatively well circumscribed. Appears, appears to your eyes, but, but it is actually, not. Actually, it is not. 
so relatively well circumscribed and histologically you will find many variants one is called well differentiated liposarcoma which resembles the normal fat cells another is the mixoid liposarcoma in which you will find mixoid material mixoid material another is the poorly differentiated liposarcoma which do not resemble the normal fat cells and most cases but in most cases of liposarcoma you will find one cell that is called lipoblast that is called lipoblast what is the lipoblast basically these resemble the fetal fat cells which were present in the fetus there are some embryonic fat cells fetal fat cells so these liposarcomas will contain the lipoblast so the hallmark here is the lipoblast okay everything has a hallmark yes. as he said so hallmark is lipoblast so what are li lipoblast these are fetal fat cells they resemble the fetal fat cells they have many cytoplasmic liquid vacuoles many multi vacuoles and these will scallop the nucleus they will try to overlap the nucleus okay i will show you so here we we'll go to the next slide so well differentiated and mixoid variants they have good prognosis well differentiated and mixoid variants have good prognosis the patients the prognosis is good they will respond to the therapy if you remove they will be good they will survive for a longer period of time good prognosis diagnosis and prognosis two different things then round cell if you find round cell variant or pleomorphic variant in which there is more pleomorphism there is more of round cells aggressive. they are aggressive they will recur and they will metastasize also so they have a poor prognosis clear what is common in this this is important amplification 12q amplification of the long arm of 12 chromosome is important in this you will find in well differentiated liposarcomas and what is this t translocation very good translocation between the 12th and the 16th chromosome it is associated with the mixoid liposarcoma so if you are in doubt on the histology you are in doubt what you will do do the cytogenetic study yes on the cytogenetic study if you find this you will say this is mixoid liposarcoma if you find amplification of the 12q you will say well differentiated okay so these are the things which will be associated and this is this is a picture of liposarcoma can you see this this one some of the cells they will resemble the normal fat cells like these cells big big cells like normal no what about the other cells this is one fat cell can you see it has multiple vacuoles many vacuoles smaller smaller and nucleus trying to cover the nucleus so this is a lipoblast the fetal fat cells are like this this is a lipo so it contains a mixture of lipocytes resembling the normal cells but also lipoblast if you will see these cells then you will die so lipoblasts need to be present so it is very clear in this slide these are the lipoblasts these are lipoblasts these are multi vacuoles not a single vacuole and they will overlap the nucleus so this is what you will find here also but it is not that clear so we completed the adipose tissue lipoma benign liposarcoma the malignant no remains the rhabdomyosarcoma what is the benign counterpart of rhabdomyosarcoma 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 it is derived from which tissue skeletal muscle skeletal muscle very good. so why we did not uh, didn't talk about the rhabdomyosarcoma the reason because this is the most common soft tissue sarcoma of childhood so if you are asked what is the most common most common soft tissue sarcoma of childhood or adolescence means at a lesser age this is the rhabdomyosarcoma this is the most common one okay most common adulthood tumor lipoma so most common sarcoma in childhood it is the rhabdomyosarcoma adulthood tumor adulthood you have the benign tumor if you are asked about the benign or in general lipoma and location also here is different we have been talking about the locations what is the most common location for the sarcoma uh, all the sarcomas 
Very good. Uh, around the knee. High around the knee and retroperitoneum. But here. Genito urinary tract. Different. Location is different. Yes. Genito urinary tract. You got it? Yes. Genitalia and urinary tract. And also the head and neck. Yeah. So this is the difference. Rhabdomyosarcoma derived from the skeletal muscle, most common. It is different from the others. Most common in childhood or adolescence. And the location is also different. Head and neck and genito urinary tract. And the common and the common class location which is found in this 230 between the second and the thirteenth chromosome. These translocations are important. I have not put much translocations, but whatever translocation I have put, this is important. Okay. 213 translocation. And most of the times you are very confused while diagnosing these carcinomas. Sarcoma, sorry. So how you will diagnose? You will go for the electron microscopy. On the electron microscope, you will find sarcomeres which are present in the skeletal muscle. And markers, like the muscle markers, you will use desmin and actin. You will find desmin and actin. There is a marker for every tissue. You know, epithelial tissue have different markers, the muscle has different. So these are markers for this muscle tissue, desmin and actin. These are aggressive neoplasms and there is bad problems. If they occur in the adults, especially in the adults, these have bad problems. Okay? Aggressive. Go to the next slide. So there are, I will show you in the lab, inshallah, uh, in detail. There are three histological types, embryonal, alveolar, and pleomorph. Pleomorphic easy. You will find big cells, small cells. There will be a lot of pleomorphism, multi-nuclear cells also. Alveolar, they will resemble the alveoli of the lung. There will be some. I will show you the pictures in the lab, inshallah. So it has a resemble, resemblance to the alveoli of the lung. And there is one embryonal. Show you the picture in this, you know, in the lab research. How you will diagnose? Liposarcoma you diagnose by the lipoblast. And rhabdomyosarcoma you will diagnose by rhabdomyoblast. So this is the hallmark of this. If you find rhabdomyoblast, it is a diagnostic cell in all the types. All the types. In embryonal type, in alveolar, in pleomorphic. In all the types you will find this cell. What is rhabdomyoplast? This is round or elongated. Either round or elongated. Tadpole or strap. Tadpole you know? You know frog? It has a tadpole. Frog? Yeah, there are stages in the development of the frog. One is called tadpole. Yeah, with a tail. Good. You have larval stage, then the tadpole stage. Frog, you know frog? Yeah. How the frog develops? How the fish develops? There is a larva first. Egg, larva, tadpole. Huh? Stages? Yes, yes, stage. So, tadpole stage is like that. It's a, it has a sort of tail also. Elongated. It's a elongated. Body, then a tail. So, tadpole are strap cells with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. I will show you one. This cell. Clear? This is one cell. This is the nucleus, black. So what is this? This is not absolutely round, somewhat elongated towards this cell. So elongated cell with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. And maybe this nucleus is eccentric towards one side. So it is towards one side. So it is filled with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm. This is a rounded cell. Isn't it? This is rounded. So you have rounded cell, you have elongated cell. So these are the cells you will find. These are rhabdomyoblast. Rounded or elongated cells called tadpole or strap cells with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm and most of the time the nucleus is pushed towards the periphery, one side. This is also elongated cell. This one. This is the nucleus. This is somewhat rounded. So you will find these cells. If you find these, you will say this is the most probably a Rhabdomyoblast and these are the rhabdomyosarcoma. But definitive diagnosis you should go for the immunohistopolis for the marker study. <coughs> so this is the these are the findings. And sarcoma, what is sarcoma borderites? 
when the rhabdomyosarcoma occurs in the hollow cavities like in the genito urinary tract cervix uterus okay or other parts of the urinary tract we call it as sarcoma botrytis sarcoma botrytis it is like grapes grapes like grape cluster of grapes growing into the cavity so it was found in dimethyl stilbestrol you know the, this was one drug which was used if you use it uh, i don't know precisely uh, this is bound to be used i think during the pregnancy if it is used dimethyl stilbestrol it can cause this stilbestrol yes 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 yes, 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 yes. so this is the type it can cause sarcoma botrytis Okay, so it will consist of you know grape-like masses which grow into the uh, this uh, uterine or cervical cavity. Okay, so this is you will find it. Just by the way, it struck my mind that dihydrogen this hormone was this. So this is labdomyoplas. So we finished skeletal muscles. So no, soft tissue tumors, one tumor, one tumor. can take me one lecture so i you know all the tumors in one lecture how i i have to make it concise it is very difficult but i tried know the nerve tissue tumors neuro fibroma neuro means you will find some nerve tissue fibroma means fibrous tissue also if you don't remember anything remember this some nerve tissue some fibrous okay. like neuro fibroma this is benign what you will find they can be cutaneous means in the skin or solitary neurofibromas peripheral nerve okay in the vicinity of a peripheral nerve or they can be present in the skin if in the skin we call cutaneous neurofibroma from the nerves solitary neurofibromas these mostly are sporadic but may be found in association with type 1 neurofibromas so this neurofibroma you have a case and you didn't answer any question like this still alhamdulillah so what is the type of inheritance in type 1 neurofibromatosis what is the one dominant even this question was not answered by this is a ppl scenario for you yes yes isn't it and i was astonished when i you know questions were what you will put the questions this was the most easy question that i have put what is the type of inheritance autosomal dominant yeah. <laughs> so nodules you will find nodules of tissues nodules of tumor they may be large and pedunculated and malignant transformation is rare no go for the plexiform neurofibroma plexiform neurofibroma occurs in individuals with neurofibroma mostly with neurofibroma this is one involve large nerve trunks and are multiple many you will find many larger many you might have seen it i have seen the picture of neurofibromatosis yes. patient yes, 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 you know sir. big big uh, big swellings these are all neuro, these are basically plexiform neurofibromas and there is a risk for the malignant nerve so they can go into the malignant nerve sheath tumor also neurofibromatosis yeah neurofibromatosis what is the morphology what you will find in the cutaneous you will find well delineated uncapsulated mass they are well circumscribed but uncapsulated Uncapsule. no capsule is there spindle cells mostly you will find the spindle cells and stroma will be highly collagenized spindle cells along with the collagen but doesn't contain very little myxoid material the plexiform neurofibroma here is the difference nerve is irregularly expanded and you will find more myxoid material here little myxoid material more myxoid so myxoid background with a low cell variety so more of a myxoid background you will find low cell variety and you will find the other nerve cells like schwann cells multipolar fibroblasts and the inflammatory cells also so in plexiform neurofibroma you will find myxoid background and you will find many different types of cells spindle cells you will find nerves and like schwann cells bipolar and multipolar fibroblasts and also you will find the inflammatory cells but here you will find mostly the spindle cells okay spindle cells only but here you will find no. all the cells all the cells this is cutaneous this is skin below it there is neurofibroma skin below neurofibroma this whole and this is plexiform 
may be from a patient of neurofibromatosis. So you will see this. Cellularity as compared to this is low, less, and you will find on your laptop there is, you know, this bluish pinkish material. This is the mixoid material. Bluish pinkish material. This is a mixoid material. Some inflammatory cells here, like small, small. These are the inflammatory cells, and these elongated, maybe the fibroblasts, multipolar fibroblasts. Clear? I put some, you know, pictures here also, so as to make you understand. Otherwise, you will not understand properly. So, malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. What do you mean by this? This is the, you know, benign is neurofibroma. This is the malignant. Malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. Highly malignant sarcomas. These are highly malignant. Second, they can arise de novo or from plexiform neurofibroma. De novo, as fresh, fresh. And plexiform from plexiform also, like in patients of neurofibromatosis type 1. What you will find here? They will be poorly defined with infiltration, invasion, necrosis, and mitosis. And tumor cells will resemble, here the tumor cells will resemble the Schwann cells with elongated nuclei and bipolar processes. And fascicle formation may be present. But you will find more necrosis, mitosis. more mitosis, and more anaplasia. This is how you will differentiate. More anaplasia, more necrosis, more mitosis. So these are the features of malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. This is the last one. What Mitosin about the histogenesis no. of this? No. Yeah, very good. It has an unknown histogenesis. Unknown histogenesis. We don't know from which tissue or cell it is derived. So age. Sarcoma is mostly at Mostly at which age? Adult, adult. Adulthood or late, old age. Okay. What is the sarcoma which comes at a younger age? Rhabdomyosarcoma in childhood and adolescence. Okay. And this synovial sarcoma also at a somewhat, you know, uh, you can say 20 to 40 years. So it is at a younger age, not the old age. You cannot say this is the old age. 20 to 40 years of age and it constitutes 10% of all the soft tissue sarcoma. Big quantity, 10% of all the soft tissue sarcomas, 10%. And again, deep tissues around the knee extremities. And what is the characteristic translocation? Six. Six closely. It is important. When I encircle it, it is important. So translocation between the X chromosome and the 18 chromosome. This is specific for the synovial sarcoma. Translocation between X and 18 chromosome. What is the morphology now? Histologically, what you will find? They say that synovial sarcomas can be biphasic. Biphasic means have two components. Or they can be monophasic. Only one component. So what are the two components basically? One is the spindle cell component and the another is the epithelial component. So it has both. Epithelial component as well as the spindle cell component. If you find both the components, it is biphasic. If you find only spindle cell component, monophasic. Only epithelial component, monophasic. Clear? So what is the epithelial component now? Epithelial cells, they may be cuboidal or columnar and arranged in glands or pods, as you find in epithelial tissues. And spindle cells, again, the fascicles, as I show you in the fibroma. So you will find both the components or only the one component. Immunohistochemistry, if you do, you will find positivity for the keratin and EMA, epithelial membrane and tissue. Okay. The things which I kept in red, this is why I kept it in red. Huh? Keratin and EMA positivity. And here, translocation between the X and the 18 chromosome. This is what you will find now. This is a biphasic synovial sarcoma. Epithelial, you know, gland is formed. These are the epithelial, cuboidal, and this is gland formation, this is gland, this is gland, this is gland, this is gland. And in between there are spindle cells running in fascicles. So this is the synovial, typical biphasic synovial sarcoma. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I hope you understood. Which yeah? fascicle? Fight, huh? <laughs>